Angelus Messenger and the Accepted Meaning of Destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Liz Armand. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. Um, I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Liz Armand. We'll be talking about the link between spirituality and mental health. Now, Liz Armand is an inspiration and multi-award winning spiritual teacher, business coach, mentor, author, holistic therapist, and the mindset shifter from her book, Insightful Minds. Liz had an accident in 1996, which was a catalyst for change. It led her to having two years off work. Now, positivity and overcoming adversity have been the theme through her life, and Liz has recovered her health dramatically. When she started in her business, she was confronted with a run of personal bereavements, leading her into depression and her business and finances floundered. Now, Liz works with midlife professionals who are feeling stuck, frustrated and unfulfilled to help them feel happier, empowered and confident, as well as feeling more balanced and with the clarity that there's their life purpose. And if you need to answer the door, Liz, to Charlie, you can do. <laughs> Thank you. That's not him, that's somebody else. <laughs> All right. Liz specializes in mental health, grief loss and trauma release. She uses multiple advanced energy and mindset te techniques to help her clients shift negative emotional baggage that they are carrying so that they can feel more energized and feel lighter and brighter. She is passionate about challenging and changing perceptions about mental health to assist individuals to be well again and to understand the link between spirituality and mental health. So without further delay, hello, Liz, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny Hi. show. Hi there, Ray. Today? I'm good, thank you. Yes, very good. <laughs> Excellent. And if Liz suddenly disappears while I'm whilst we're doing the show, it's only because her dog wants to come in. So yeah, if you hear him wrapping the cat flap, <laughs> we'll just say, just a minute. <laughs> exactly. Let's, let's him in again. We'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Um, so before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Liz and I want to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So Liz, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how do we know if we are walking along our spiritual path in good health? Okay, so um, thanks, Ray. Lovely to be here. So um, more about me, I suppose, just um, to explain. So I've had a history of health issues, money issues and happiness issues. Um, I'm 48 now, going 49 this year. And it's been a bit of a bumpy ride um, to get to the here and now today um but often a lot of healers have had that sort of uh, experience to be able to help others through it and trying to work out what I am who I am what I'm meant to be doing has been a, a challenge as, as well so um I was relatively healthy probably until about at the age of 24 I did have um as developed asthma was one of the things that I, I had but I was born with a heart complaint as well and I'm a I'm an unplanned and unexpected twin and I would say that I was actually um, born with anxiety, um, anxiety of my, my parents. But, you know, I was born with it, this heart complaint, born at home, breach, unexpected. And I think that's actually um, caused a lot of problems for me going, going forward. So I understand anxiety very well for um, helping my clients to understand what's, what's going on about it. So age 24, I had an accident at work at the time at my career was my first career was hospitality management working in um, hotels catering etc and as catering manager I had a fall fell not very far probably only about a meter if, if that off a step and um, got a core of a metal step in my buttock and twisted my pelvis and um, this is at Heathrow airport where I was a catering manager and I that led me to having two years off work and I developed chronic pain syndrome and now that I am doing what I'm 
doing now, actually, I realised that it was actually me being really bored, not following my life purpose, not listening to my body, not understanding what I was here for. So it was there was lots of um, shifts and changes by having that accident. Um, and me having the two years off work, I, I retrained to be an IT trainer. I was spotted helping my fellow students. I was just doing out of um, t- I had six months where I didn't work. Of the, uh, sorry, the six months of the two years where I didn't do anything, really. I was just sort of bed bound and not really you know, feeling sorry for myself. And then I had an 18 month period where I was um, being I was just doing, I was doing courses. I found out by being on benefit, I was able to do lots of free courses um, different to what the system is now, yeah. but you could you could go to other education and do whatever you fancied. So um, I I developed an interest in holistic um, therapies to help me, not to help others. I'm perfectly honest, and that was sort of my hobby for quite a long time was going to holistic fairs and thinking it was fascinating learning about um, spirituality and how you could heal yourself. And and but it was a quest to me for me to get better, not me to helping others, but. You know, it's it's gone gone full circle for me to help others with the knowledge that I, I gained during that time. So, after this two years off work, I was spotted helping my fellow students and became an, a, an IT trainer. Um, but still had chronic pain syndrome. But I'd been predicted by doctors to only um, have, I think it was seventy percent of my function for life. They'd they'd basically said, you know, you'll never get back full function. You'll never be out of pain. I was at the end of the line of chronic pain um, treatment on the NHS. And you know what? Not one person worked on my head. How, how, okay. worrying, well, how worrying is that? Yeah, not one. I had, I had six sessions of counselling that I asked for that was thought was a waste of time for being perfectly honest. Um, but because I didn't understand it, I think it was part of it. Although I'm, I'm still not a fan of, of counselling, if I'm being honest. Um, so I had that... Um, I, I during that time I decided I would learn a bit more about how my mind was working why there was a issues etc et around the same time I became a uh, a coach that's right I'd had to I'd had to take some time off to four four weeks off to I had a, a legal case going on a personal injury case going on because of the accident and the independent doctor had said that I had to um go on this pain management course which cost me five thousand pounds to go on this pain management wow. course yeah, that he'd wrote, that he'd wrote to me that I had to go on this thing. And obviously to show willing to, you know, show that I was trying to sort myself out, I did go on that that particular course. But I, I um, was made redundant while I was on that that particular course. Um, but it, it did t- teach me a lot of different things about how actually, you know, introduced me to hypnosis, it introduced me to life coaching, um, the psychologists on, on the course. And they, they were sort of early days and saying actually are you creating this illness um and it's i think it's a very similar course to what's run at T- st thomas is now or that um that i know quite a few healers have gone gone through it but we're talking this is 2002 it's a long time yeah. ago um when i was on the the course myself and and it wasn't on the nhs that's that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> and i cost the nhs thousands thousands of pounds wow you know, and it's 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 it it's incredible to think I had well over a, a hundred doctor's appointments and specialist appointments and whatever and I, I now think god you know it's such cheaper ways of actually sort of oh interesting my fire alarm's going <laughs> oh no be, that must be Vivian cooking <laughs> and she, she's watching she's waved so Vivian Vivian what are you cooking <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's okay these things happen there we go True professional, just keep going. Yeah, so, exactly. What was I talking about? Yeah, so my health. Yeah. So um, it led me into life. Doing this pain management course led me into life coaching. Let, let, you know, because two of the psychologists had been on a life coaching course. Um, so I that led me on to doing that course, becoming a coach. And then I, that led me into um, education. Mm-hmm. And I was then working at uh, Northwest Kent College. Um, actually, I've worked at two colleges actually. What well, as a teacher, and that led to the teaching learning manager. Yeah. Hopefully, this should take the battery out. <laughs> That'll be okay, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, des- she's desperately trying to take the battery out. We we'll just carry on. <laughs> 
quiet. Okay. So uh, what, what I noticed by doing the coaching, for example, because coaching is different to counselling in the fact that it's asking me questions for me to get the answer, that then started shifting my perception about different things. And I started shifting to being getting um, uh, well, well again. It yeah. also, um, around the same time of doing the pain management course maybe two maybe maybe two or three years before that at 98 I was in power to Reiki for the first time okay so and I say for the first time because I've done level one twice level two twice master teacher only once um and I'm also angelic Reiki practitioner but you know at that time I didn't understand what I'd been given when I'd been given that Reiki empowerment but my life started to change yeah it starts to improve but no still like I said nobody worked on my head so the first thing in 2002 when somebody started working, I had just me learning to be a coach, then mm. started to transform different things for me. And I was getting more interested in different things. Anyway, move, move things on about, you know, sort of health. Um, I trained in various different things in 2010 when I wanted to become a Reiki master. And that year I did neuro-linguistic programming, timeline therapy, hypnotherapy, not just practitioner level, but I also did master practitioner level because I managed to get some funding from the college to be able to work with college staff as well as, you know, me to be, have it personally yeah. as a qualification. So I had massive transformation. I also learned EFT because I just saw something in a, um, I think it was a connections guide on it, and that sounded good. And then I also did cognitive behavioral therapy at the same time. So I had this massive shift in 2010 of, of mindset. And actually what was happening was my body was actually – getting healthier if you like and I you know when I moved to to Maidstone uh, 15 years ago I actually stopped taking any painkillers at all and actually decided not to even believe that I had chronic pain syndrome but what's even more fascinating is things like my heart complaint I don't have that anymore my twin sister does but I don't because when we were 34 um she wanted to have kids I at the time you know wasn't looking at having kids but she she's, she's a GP so I'm yeah. holistic health she's a GP um she said oh you need to have these tests and and heart scans whatever to work out what drugs you need to have when you are pregnant so I so I went along with it because you know that's what she said I needed to do my twin sisters listening to her yeah and when I had all the scans at St Thomas's it was just showing nothing's there so what's that about because until the age of 18, I was being checked every year for my heart complaint. And I was taken out. I wasn't allowed to do cross country and I wasn't allowed to do diff- different things because of it. I had to take antibiotics if I cut myself, all different different things. So things were sort of shifting and changing. So wind it on a bit. You know, when I came, in, you know, came into business in 2011, I then started hitting various traumas which then took me into depression. So I'd had lots of health issues. I mean, depression is a health issue, obviously. Yeah. But um, but I'd had physical health issues pre- previous to that, but it was getting better. In 2011, I had a miscarriage, but I was a very, very logical person and didn't really, even though I was trained in therapy, I didn't really get it, if you know what I mean. I didn't really understand what I was shifting in myself. And, you know, So I didn't understand loss particularly so I you know in losing the baby um I was upset don't go wrong I was, was upset but actually I don't think I was ever supposed to have that baby and actually it was a catalyst for my husband leaving me because he wanted a, a natural child yeah um and I'm grateful actually that he's gone a bit being perfectly honest but um I did love it but when we when he was due to leave you know we did love it we did love it but I've worked through that that issue but anyway I had I had a miscarriage, then I had a redundancy situation at work where I helped too many people be okay about staying or going from the college. Didn't look after myself well, so there's a lot of lessons for me to learn about looking after me, that of being too much of an overgiver, not not receiving you know, help, if you like, having yeah. low self-worth and not realising I had low self-worth. Um, lots of comparison to my twin sister, um, lots of comparison to other family members as well, um, financially as well which I hadn't hadn't appreciated um and then I had um also have had different different things sort of happen in the fact that um so I'd had two had two failed IVF attempts in the end of 
2011. So I'd had the miscarriage, redundancy, two failed IVFs. Came in depressed because I hadn't really dealt with certain things that were going on. And my relationship with my husband was deteriorating. Yeah. Then my husband got seriously sick. We went away on holiday um, the start of uh, 2012. Um, and he'd said there was money available for us to go on this holiday in his business. And that was not true. My money had just sort of run out. My redundancy money had all gone because he wasn't actually uh, stepping up into what he was meant to be doing either. And then once we'd, so that was 2000, yes, yeah, so then, that's right, then my, we came back from holiday after being really sick, I had pneumonia out, out in Egypt. Oh, gosh. And then, yeah, within a week of him getting better, but I'd say that was to do with grief now, actually, that, and him not dealing with what the situation was going yeah. on. He, my mum and dad were involved in a serious car crash and my mum displaced her neck and then was, um, she died after 10 days. Then my cat had to be put down the same week my mum died. My two sisters went manically high. Um, they'd never shown signs of depression or signs of mental illness, but my mum had. My mum had been sectioned before. Yeah. And then uh, 2013, my sister-in-law died. And she was the carer to my mentally ill brother-in-law so my my husband was having to go and sort him out and you know, whatever and then my husband left me with thirty eight thousand pounds for the debt in 2014 so I had a whole catalogue of trauma in a, in a short period of time yeah. to, to deal with and to to get through you know etc so even though I'd, I'd I'd actually gone from a low-paid career of being in catering to actually a nice 45 grand job jump ship into business and then lost everything and went into debt and then it's been a journey of having to get myself up again and out of that into where I'm meant to be how does that come come back to spirituality mental health well I clearly was experiencing mental health issues through that that period and a lot of it has been about my spiritual path Mm. and the patterns I had in my path and um wonky behaviours that I had in my path that were stopping me from being who I'm meant to be. You know, on my my book, Are You Worth It?, I talk about being the healer's healer. And actually, I can heal any healer, although everybody in the world technically is a healer. Mm. Yeah, so, um, but, but that wasn't understood by people. It was like, well, what's that about? But it just means I've had such an experience of knowledge of loads of different aspects of life that I can work with somebody about their finances or I can work with somebody about their relationships or I can work with somebody around bereavement or I can work with somebody around how to get a job or employment or lots of different yeah. topics. So trying to find my way as to um, what I was meant to be doing and thinking about, you know, I actually have fantastic secrets here about how to be well, but then I would I would be knocked down by my twin sister would say something to me that would be medical and then I'd go, oh, I better not say it then. Because a lot of my lessons were about speaking up and, and saying what I believe is my truth. Now, obviously, yeah. at this moment in time, we are in lockdown. We're in, you know, an immense period of illness. So, you know, anybody watching, I do not want to offend anybody by saying, you know, what we're believing in is our spiritual path, you know, etc. But I can only talk about what I've been through. And that's what I discuss in my book, Are You Worth It?, you know, a spiritual guide to managing your money mindset. It was about my self-worth. It was about the lessons I needed to learn in, in life. And I needed to slow down. And a lot of people at this moment in time are being slow, yeah. slowed down dramatically um, to deal with different issues. Now, lots of people in isolation will be um, struggling to ask for help. Yeah for you know their groceries and whatever because if they've always done things for themselves and I, I have to admit you know I've just been in in isolation the last two, two weeks and first time we asked my best friend for some help and we and we also have asked somebody from the school to help and it was tough to ask that help I was thinking why I've got you know I've got a network of well over 3,000 people I can ask for help I had loads of people when I said I put a post on Facebook saying oh no there's no butter or, or milk left and then my sister saw the post and drove round and put it outside the door. It yeah. No, it arrived. I was like, that's, that's a miracle. You know, to get it that quick. But it, it's very much about people's lessons in, in a sense. So the lockdown is actually 
pushing people through a lot of lessons at the moment, you know, connecting with nature. I mean, the amount of people I've seen, I live in the countryside, the amount of people I see on paths, I've never seen them ever before. Out. No, but serious. It's like going, well, you get lost. I'm not used to seeing them. It's usually my space. No, yeah. Not, not <laughs> other people's. You know, I'm going, damn, we're having to do the social distancing on a footpath. People yeah. have to stand and wait for the whole footpath for me to, like, come on, Charlie, hurry up, hurry up, because we've got to get along for, to let other people along. We don't usually experience that. But but it's good that people are connecting with nature and they are grounding themselves more. Um, and there's so many opportunities through lockdown to um, help you, yourself, help your health and to, to meditate and to um, notice what's important to you rather than we, we get so caught up in the busyness. My only worry really is about social media and the, the negativity that's being spread yeah. through that and the false messaging through it. Um, and for people to notice, because there's an awful lot of anger and there's an awful lot of judgment going on. And, you know, as a Reiki master yourself, you'll know that, you know, just for I'll have no anger. But anger isn't just there isn't just one emotion around anger we have irritation we have frustration we have impatientness and um, hatred and but when you then put that into health you know our, our health is four elements mainly of our, our spiritual health physical health mental health and emotional health if you louise hay it of you know different emotions mm-hmm. so for example um the emotion of resentment sits behind cancer the emotion of uh, if you've got a problem with silence is irritation. So I know that when I work with my clients, I'm I'm looking at their history of different health issues and what health issues they've got now, and look at how to change their behaviour so they are less judgmental, that they let go of that negative emotion, and that's what will actually help them get well again. Um, but it's an inside job; you have to want to do it, and if yeah. you you have to want to heal yourself to to be able to then you know, help help others and to me depression is it's just repressed emotions that we're not doing enough um energy work to to uh release the negative emotions that we're feeling whether that be reiki angelic reiki motion freedom technique energy light method balance procedure um all those different um methods meditation hmm. that would actually shift it as well as exercise obviously you know anything out of the mouth is is releasing yeah um different things as well there's so much people can do to get themselves healthy again but you have to uh appreciate that the medical system is very much based on the on um we treat each each ailment the same way so if somebody has a knee problem um you'll be you say to the doctor i've got a knee problem go, okay i'll refer you to an orthopedic surgeon the orthopedic surgeon will go okay I can um, send you to the physio. I can do an operation on you. I could lop the 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 you no. Know, I could cut your leg off. That would that would sort it out for you, or or whatever they you know, yeah. or give you medicine, you know, to do. I give you pills um, to sort out the pain. But actually, we've got all got a unique path. We've all got unique memories where we've taken on board things. Not everybody gets angry when people don't say thank you when they've let them out through. a you know and if you're driving and you've let let somebody out but actually somebody who thinks in in feelings so in a mind we think in pictures sounds feelings or, or logic the feelings person will go hmm, never said thank you to me and they've just internalized a little bit of anger every time they do that a little bit of anger get you know gets more and more and more and you know obviously it becomes a bigger thing to deal with on it so but people have had the different lifetimes i know you do a lot of sort of the past life regression stuff me too, when I do timeline therapy in particular, yeah. I'm taking people back to the earliest memory because you'll get the biggest shift by taking them back to the earliest thing. I work with quite a lot of academics, you know, lawyers, accountants. Mm-hmm. Um, people that are in their head. You know, in their head. You know, actually, I have to start sometimes with you know, cognitive behavioural therapy and be very you know, logical with them, first of all. And when I'm doing time, they won't go past life, don't believe in past life okay, well, just do this lifetime. You won't get the best results. You need to know that, you know? So, but the more times you do it, then the more they trust you, the more they will go and a bit, oh, yeah. oh, gosh. And to be fair, I did not believe in past lives either. You know, when I did my training for neurolinguistic programming, timeline therapy and hypnosis, it was a combined course. And I didn't think I even knew I was getting timeline therapy. You know, and it was a bit of a, 
um, I don't know, I was like, I'm not sure about this when I was suddenly <laughs> going to do the course. And then when somebody took, did timeline on me and you know, when I went into a past life, I was even more like freaked out by it. But actually now, to me, it's just perfectly normal that you take somebody back to the earliest thing yeah. that's causing them a problem to release it. And actually, it's fantastic. They don't even need to talk about it. Whereas our traditional model of psychotherapy, counselling, psychology is so-and-so does this thing to you, they bully you or they do that. You know, my model, I think what your model is, is you know, how are we projecting this out? How can we change our projection to actually project something different? So that you know, if you're attracting in I don't know, men who, who treat you badly, then what, is, what are the beliefs that you've got about men how you're reacting, what you're allowing to happen, what your boundaries are, you know, et cetera, um, that would cause emotion, which therefore cause you know, ill health Yeah. on it. I mean, I've, I've done an awful lot of work around loss and trauma and actually my um, way forward, and you know, if, if people do look at my website, even from when we set up this talk to, to now, is very much I've set up as you know, grief, trauma, uh, sorry, loss, grief and a trauma release specialist basically because of what we're going through with um uh the, the virus etc there's lots more bereavement happening it's a bereavement of you know not starting a job you think you're gonna start you know you said to me before you know i think you're moving are you moving house still like no yeah you know, so i'm having to deal with the fact that i'm not moving house just yet yeah um, on it there's but people have you know think they're gonna start jobs and they're not starting jobs they're thinking that you know they might have been you know, leaving the partner that was that was absolutely causing a, a, a problem. I mean, unfortunately, domestic abuse, you know, 30% it's gone up, hasn't it? Which, yeah. you know, which we were talking about off, off air. So I think it's it, it's very much about um, people understanding that they, they can empower themselves to make different choices. And it can feel, you know, very, very challenging, very um, struggle. You know, we're suffering, but actually that's often could be our ego and we have to, you know, step away from that to be able to move forward to um to feel better. And to me, depression, whether that's any form of depression that is, you know, labelled by the NHS, um, is it's just repressed emotions. That actually when somebody learns to unrepress that and understands what their life path is, they start it starts sort of opening up to them. You know, why is my title the mindset shifter the mindset shifter is yes i'm shifting somebody into service i might be shifting them from ha- from being depressed to being happy or shifting them into a job they're meant to be in or shift you know shifting perception for them you know i will always be looking at a positive slant you know because hope is the emotion that we want to have be hopeful for what's coming what are the emotions that sit behind depression anger hopelessness rejection anxiety so distrust so it's about making sure that people have the the right emotional arsenal if you like the the, the right techniques to be able to move into it so if they start shifting those negative emotions they'll start feeling better in yeah. my book um are you worth it i've got a love game that uh, i created it's but very personal to me about you know your your feelings your choices you're making and to have a happy heart mm. if you are you know judgmental and you're anxious and you're angry and you're acting like the victim you know etc you will have worse mental health and you will have worse physical health and emotional health you'll feel terrible and it's about understanding the i'm sure you will have had to me talk, talk about Esther jerry hicks on this mm. uh, before the about emotional scale that the here and now, us talking now, is the present, isn't it? We're yes. very much in the present. But our mind will play tricks with us of going into the past the whole time, which is yeah. about our programming, or into the future, which is anxiety. So it's about recognising what your, what your present is to be able to then to have let go of that full past. And that's where, you know, for example, the balance procedure cards are really good, which I think Vivian talked about yeah. um, last time. Um, because that does allow you to to live in the present, but I would say also there are there are still patterns that are going on that you need to notice that you have within you, and it's it's very much an internal job and understanding what you're saying to yourself as to what you're creating. So you know, regardless of the fact I spent forty thousand pounds on my training, 
you know, I still have issues coming up and still things which are a, a difficulty and going, well, why, why can't I get this working? What is it that I'm, how am I stopping it yeah. to not allowing the, the growth? You know, from a numerology perspective, I was predicted to have five years of crap around money. Boy, was that true, you know, and, and no matter how much I tried to shift it, because you know, by that point I was a trainer of neurolinguistic programming. We believe, you know, shift any belief, get rid yeah, of it, yeah. you know, whatever. You don't know. No, it just, it just wouldn't go. And I've been working, well, what's the deeper layer and the deeper layer of it that's actually to allow me to help people in the way that I want to help them. You know, I'd never come on like a show like this before, if I'm being honest, because I wasn't, you know, I didn't used to believe in angels, even though I'm an angelic Reiki practitioner. Because I don't see angels in the same way as other other people. I feel it. I feel it's there. Yeah, I, 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 um, I, I, I don't see yeah. them. Yeah. But when, you, when you've had a discussion with people, they say they've seen it or, or whatever. Oh, maybe that's what you're supposed to do when you see angels or whatever. But what I do know is when I've called on the angels to help me to in different situations, boy, have they been there. But mm-hmm. because I wasn't a good person at asking for help, I didn't really appreciate you had to ask them. So then it was just like standing by going, she'll ask us, you know, eventually. It'll just, she's really going to just make you feel really crap until we actually, you know, get asked yeah. you know, yeah. to help. Yeah, because I think that's the thing, isn't it? A lot of people don't, as, as you say, no, they don't ask. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're here to ask. We are here to ask and to, you know, yeah. question as to why we're here, what we're doing, how, how other people can help us. Yeah, that, that that's that's what we're here for—to ask questions. Yeah, really be fearful of asking. No, not not at all. And I think, you know, going back to you know the link between spirituality and mental health, hmm. what I've noticed. So I've had family members affected by mental health, as in being sectioned. So uh, three family members have been sectioned. I've had, I've obviously had mental health issues. I was never sectioned though. But if it wasn't a therapist that I am, I think it probably would have been. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've also worked as a mental health support worker in a mental health hospital and I've been a family member visiting somebody in a mental health hospital and so I've got a very rounded view about mental health Mm. and my god there's a massive uh, link to spirituality mental health that just is not addressed as part of the current system around um, helping people with their mental health so you know, when you get into a mental health issue with anxiety, etc., often you will open up to the angels or other perceptions or um, the beings or whatever it is. And then, you know, you can't share share that with somebody. Or you, I think, well, but not time I saw a ghost or, an, or, an, or, or whatever. Yeah. Whereas actually if we become much more open about talking about what we're feeling, hearing, seeing, you know, etc., you'll find actually we'll have less mental health issues. And... Um, at the at the um, hospital I've worked at, you know, I've had fascinating conversations with the patients in there. You know, they, they said, "Oh, yeah, I used to be a psychic. No, you still are a psychic. Yeah, <laughs> always one. <laughs> yeah, you're on <laughs> it. But they sort of think, you know, in conversations about angels and 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 whatever and things that they're, that they're believing in. Yet, what they receive as treatment won't necessarily do it because they're they're heavily medicated or yeah, you know, they're not given that avenue." to to explore um apparently in somebody told me in denmark they actually if somebody's got schizophrenia they actually send in a medium first to work with that person but like whether this. that's yeah it does make sense absolutely and but I, I know that i got ridiculed by a few people when i was chatting about you know i was being quite open about what i believed in it yeah and i, and I will say i was a psychic medium because that is what i am i'm insured to say that um but you know uh, the odd comment from from logical nurses, you know, about, you know, what I believed in, you yeah. know, and it's like, well, why can't I believe that? You know, you haven't asked me anything about what I'm trained in, why I might think that, you know, etc. So I want, a big thing for me is that people are open about their spiritual, um, uh, spirituality. It will be different to each person, but that, that everybody can express openly about about that side of them because the their spiritual path is literally you know what happened two minutes ago and past is that that path of what they've been on and where they're going to which is the future uh, life progression stuff you're doing is is 
the path they're on. That is their spiritual path. And it's about we all have lessons to learn through that path. Lots of people being forced through lessons at the moment with the, the whole yeah. sort of corona um, situation that's going on. But there's lots that people can do as well to, to shift and change it. I'd say to everybody, you know, get yourself a set of cards and start, you know, these are my, my angel cards. These are angels of abundance cards. You know, I, I pull cards every day for myself. Now I have a morning routine where I, I get up and I meditate, first of all. And meditation is fantastic for your mental health. Yeah. And to to understand you and to ask questions and just I also get fantastic information for um my book, you no know, future books, for when I'm writing blog posts, I'm giving guidance about different things, go, Oh, that's fantastic information, okay. Um and just I mean I have books for the future, you know, I've got um there's a relationship book in the future called The Courtship. And, you know, I, if there's anything dating that I see or, or I think about or for me or whatever, and I go, I'll oh, just write it in there because I can't work on that book yet because it would drive me mad because I haven't done the next book yet. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, yeah, you I kind of pull, pull back. Yeah. It has to be at this particular order. The Love Game is in three books <laughs> um, on, on it. Well, technically four books because there's two versions of Are You Worth. There's a business version and a consumer version. But so there will be four books. Oh, um, but the but the three main books, if that makes sense. Yeah. On it. But yeah, it's it is about people being um open and having um being open to not ridiculing other people, not judging other people for what they yes. say. And I think, you know, when we look at things like autism, for example, massive anxiety behind autism, and actually all the clients I've worked with autism have actually it's just been anxiety them not being able to express they don't understand emotion and actually when I've taught emotion to them and, and help them feel it they become less autistic <laughs> yeah? yeah so there's things that re- which can be done you know I've had um dyslexic uh, clients and I go do you want to get rid of dyslexia should we get rid of it you know and and squash the part of them that believes that they're or they're living that as a disability not saying that they shouldn't live their life they need to live their life more visually that's that's yeah you no know, basically um but often people tell themselves not good enough because their mind is still going back to school experiences you know i'm a teacher trainer they you know that, that i you know one of the reasons i came away from being a teacher trainer was i realized i was i was teaching techniques that would make a teacher more stressed yeah you know, so academic writing in itself is basically saying Go and find five people's information about this particular topic and then back it up with what your opinion is. So you can never trust your intuition with that. Yeah. Because you always had to even get people's stuff that was at a date that you had to write about and then say your opinion on it, which you know, doesn't, serve, doesn't serve and actually wasn't practical in communicating with students. Um, and I I'm, I'm, was very blessed with the students I had, and they were very, I think they were very thankful I trained in NLP because they had a completely different experience yeah. with uh, working with me because of it. Um, and I introduced meditation to the classes and all sorts of different different things. Um, yeah, so I think it, it is about looking at what's going on for yourself yes and, and really owning your your story, if you like. So they say we have a, our own story. And if you are in business, you will have your story because you'll you know, do public speaking and, and share your story. My story is at the start of my book. Yes. And you know, people understand that story about what's, what's happening and that will give them a transformation through that story about you know, why did I have such low self-worth? What, what did I do about it? How did I look at my money management mm. skills as well as my self-worth? Because actually your self-worth is intrinsically linked to what money you've, you actually have. Yes. So. Yeah, you know, somebody having pots of money, actually, you'll find they've got very, if they hold on to the money, they will actually have um, very good uh, behaviours around charity, for example, mm-hmm. donating large amounts. But somebody who's got an issue around money will be judging and going, well, why don't they donate all their money to do yeah. whatever? And we'll have, we'll have an issue around it. Um, so it's, it is about looking at how are you being judgmental of another? How are you not loving another? When I'm working with any of my clients, I'm working with how can you turn these set of eyes to be love for everybody 
that are around you. And if you notice that you're being angry at that person or you're being judgmental about that person or unforgiving of that person for their behaviours, then it's, I have to do that work on me. If I sense yeah. anger in another or anxiety in another, then that's actually mine. That's not just theirs. They may well be suffering from it, but you know, yeah. I've got to go and do the inner work on, on me in a deeper level on me about why am I sensing that in that person. And the transformation of when you are looking at another person through love and is, is immense. You will feel so much better for, for doing it. And I think the whole situation we're in now is bringing families together, is allowing people to, to, to realise actually that I'm really missing that person and really wanting that connection. So, you know, there's a lot of positives come out of the situation that we're in yeah. at the moment. You know, obviously, I'm sad about the souls that are moving, moving on. But actually, you know, as I teach my clients, your shit, my shit, you know, we've all got a, got a uh, responsibility to look after our health. It's not about the doctors fixing us. It's about we take responsibility for what we're thinking, saying, doing. There is scientific proof behind what I do and what you're, you're doing. That's what's yeah, so fantastic exactly. now. Is it's actually, we've, we've, been, we've been saying it for, for years, and now we're being finally a little bit trusted. Not enough, but we are being a little They'll bit get trusted. There. They'll get there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's interesting. You know, bear in mind, you know, I spent this huge amount of money on my training, but I didn't train the traditional way to be in mental health. So I've offered my services to help the, the NHS to, there's a, um, I think there's about 4,000 people have signed up now as, as professionals to, to help. You have to do at least four hours a week to, to be put on the system. But actually, I can't even be labelled as a mental health professional, even though I've got, you know, 10 years experience working yeah. mental health, because I didn't train the way that people think I should have trained to, to get it. I had to put myself down as a coach. And even then, I'm not sure if I'll be accepted because yeah. I don't have, you know, because you had to have supervision, you had to have something else. Some, so there was an, an awarding body. I'm thinking, well, I'll put myself down. They'll either say yes or no. I'm insured. Yeah. I'm insured to work with, with people, but there's so much judgment still around what is right. I'm not saying that some people don't do a bad job as a therapist. Yes, they do. And you should have certain um, boundaries around it, whatever. But then um, there are people that are fully trained in various things that still. You, you can, oh, absolutely. That are yeah. still not that brilliant yeah absolutely absolutely and I think it's you know when I think about you know clients in the past of mine yeah there's things where I would have done things differently if I could have done but but have I done a good job for the majority yeah I have you know I've always acted in good faith for every client I've had as far as I'm aware you know they might not have thought that because if they didn't invest enough in working with me I won't have cleared everything in them to actually for them to move on and that's, you know, that's just by, by the by. Yeah. But a lot yeah. of that was to do with my self-worth too, about not wanting to charge too much, not wanting to offer too much. Because I was like, ooh, will they have the money, you know, to do it, rather than just going, actually, you know, I'm worth it. And, yeah. you know, if you want me, you have to pay for me, my services. You know, that's just how it is. I mean, there's a lot of therapists at the moment, you know, or, or people offering things for, for free, discounted, yeah. you know, etc. And... And it is challenging when people say I've got no money, but they've they've been um, thrown into a um, you know in the mind health, wealth, and happiness is interlinked. So as soon as you your health starts suffering, you will start worrying about your money. And obviously, yeah. with you know people's jobs, you know businesses disappearing, you know whatever they've been thrown into that thing. But I, I saw somebody's posts somebody had posted saying they were charging 50 pounds for counseling psychotherapy 50 pounds it's not for what for what you have to pay for the the training and for the um the ongoing support and and whatever and then somebody saying no i haven't got that sort of money i can't spend spend that but somebody will happily spend that on a takeaway or on yeah. drugs or on or they'll know, put or that money alcohol. towards have when 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 this is done they'll put that money on towards the holiday. having their hair done. Um... Yeah, exactly. But they won't they won't put it towards their health. And it's yeah. like actually as as therapists we've got to stand tall and go no you, this is time for you to pay for it actually, you know, and, and not get drawn into that um, <laughs> arena of no no you can't um, that we have to get free. Obviously, as I say you you offset. You, I want to give my ten percent of my tithe you know 10% of my time or my money 
to something to help. So I'm happily doing the thing for the NHS. I'm sh- I just need to send some insurance documents off today and then I'll be on the list. Um, and I, you know, I always do work for, for charity, but it's a being aware of not discounting or expecting your therapist to be free. You wouldn't expect your plumber to be free. No. No, you wouldn't expect your lawyer to be free. But for some reason, you know, when people are fit, not feeling good, they, they think that maybe it'll be you know, cheaper yeah. or free you know, for what they're doing. I mean, saying that, if I can get a wellbeing grant to do the work they want to do, and the same, same for you, you know, that's what I'm, you know, I did see there was, there was, uh, there was I, can't, I think it was Calagas or something, we had some sort of um, wellbeing fund. I'm going to look at that tomorrow. But you have to live in a rural area for that, for that to be something I apply for. It's something to help the community. Mm. But I've got to look at it and work out how can I apply for £5,000 of it to start working with, um, people locally, help. and it, you know, and it'll probably be, to be honest, be group therapy yeah. because you no, know, I'm 150 pounds an hour. So you'll go, well, that's that money won't last very long working with people. Well, it, no, it won't. But actually, I invested all that money in myself before. I've not been funded by um, other people, so it's it's kind of it's a bit of a chicken and egg, really. If, you know, wanted to help people, but also, you know, I've got bills to pay as well. Yeah, and um, to to go forward, so. Going back to spiritual path and good health, mm. it's about taking that leap of faith in yourself and knowing that actually there's so much you can learn. At the start of my book, um, one of the chapters looks at write down your, your history, your life history. Now, that was one of the most transformational things I ever did on myself and what I do with my clients because just by writing it down, you start seeing patterns forming of different things repeating and I, I hadn't appreciated that I'd moved I'd moved jobs every time I'd had time out so I'd had you know four months off sick or you know two weeks off sick or two years off, off sick and actually because I was going too fast through life I never noticed that actually that's what what happened yeah. I, would, I would get sick the universe take me out because I wouldn't listen to my body I'd be sick I'd have time to reflect and then I'd change career. Also, when my behaviour was looked at, it was, and this is like to the minute details, so I've had lots, lots, lots of stuff done, done on me, to me, um, was looking at the fact that actually I had a pattern about, um, as a child, I learned that to get more attention, I hurt myself. Now, I'd, I, that was not a conscious pattern. I did not yeah. consciously tell myself, no, hurt yourself, get more attention. But I was one of four, four children my dad was very much often out, out to work, you know, earning the, earning the book, as it were. Um, and it's not a reflection of the fact that that was the case, but I'd learned as a child that's how I got more attention. I also learned that if I cleaned the house, I got more attention as well. I used to love my mum coming in going, oh, the house! You know, it's fantastic, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I like, yeah. I like, I got, got the house done. Yeah, I got the house, the house, you know, she'd come in and go, oh, my God, it's amazing. The house has, like, all been... You know, magically all done, and yeah, you know, I probably should have done it more often actually. But I know that yeah. it got me att- it got me attention by by you know cleaning the house mm. because it's something you clearly didn't want to want to do. And it probably made it feel so much better because your house is your energy, isn't it? It's your yeah. you know the feng shui you know sort of as- aspect of it. Um, yeah. And I'd say to anybody who's listening, who's um, you know look at their mental health, you know do look at feng shui, look at um, things around your house, look at what's you know, is there anything that needs fixing or that that is broken that um, that needs paint that needs painting that needs decluttering? But it's not just your house. Look at your garden, your office, and your car, and and start looking at. Um, hi there, Karen. Is it Karen? No, Kieran. Sorry, Kieran. 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 I haven't got my, haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've had Kieran, Kieran, and we've had Jackie as well, who said hello earlier. Oh, hi there, Jackie. So. It is, it is about looking at those different aspects because they will give you clues to how to improve things. So I know that my kitchen is my health and I've, I've literally just painted the cupboards again yesterday, no, definitely yesterday, because I, they get, it's paint, it's a, they're painted surfaces and they get grubby because yeah. it's a kitchen at the end of the day and it's actually easier to paint them to, I do wash them down, they don't really look as good. So I painted that again and, and it's a wooden, um, work surface so putting yeah. uh, oil on them again and just renewing that 
and yeah. just paying attention yesterday that's right yesterday's job was scrubbing the the decking outside and getting all the mud off it because I'm going to paint that um I mean my friend jokes with me it, it says like my, my house is smaller than it was when I moved in 15 years ago because <laughs> I've painted my room so many times in 15 years I mean the the kitchen must have been painted at least 10 times in the uh, 15 years I've been here because I pretty much do it every year mm. and it's yeah um yeah. yeah but but each yeah but each each room has and it's like yeah my my money zone is not actually in my house either I have like a little courtyard bit it's over that bit there mm. and I I have to have a crystal that hangs down into it to balance the energy in it and I have to I can't get into it easy I have to catapult myself through the bathroom window onto a chair that I've had to put through to me to get onto to clean the windows and to clear the leaves up or there's a drain in there to clean the drain out. It's just about to be done actually because it was um because I've done the decking I've splashed dirt over yeah. the side. So um that's my next job, possibly tomorrow to face it. <laughs> it's, it's always, it's always <laughs> brilliant to to, to um, But it's to... a full moon tomorrow, so actually I will do it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. My my crystals will be going out. So talking of crystals, obviously Mm. I do card readings and guide meditation, but you've also got your cards there as well. Uh So what I was thinking is if I pull a card and you pull a card for each other and for everyone watching. Yeah. Why not? I I think that's, I think that's a, a pretty good, pretty good idea. Yeah. 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 So who, so is this one for you then that I'm doing? Um, or, yeah, you're, everybody. you're doing this for me and everybody watching, and okay. I'm doing this for you Ooh. and everybody watching. Okay. Right. Oops. Oh, Ooh, you've got an escapee. <laughs> I've got an escapee. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm going to go with uh, um with my yeah. escapee card. Okay, I'm going to go with that one. Okay. So these ones are the angels of abundance cards okay so um because i'm known for money money mindset but money mm. mindset is purely it's not just about the money your health is your wealth and that's the thing is that people think it's all about the money but actually the the more you look after your health or aspects of your health the more the money will flow yeah so so this particular card is attracting not chasing so so any anything or anyone you chase after will run the other way because of the fears underlying tra- the chasing energy. Instead, attract what you need by sending out love and gratitude and welcoming energy. So this is very much about um, – so in my, in my book, Are You Worth It?, I talk about um, different attributes to be attractive to the universe. Mm-hmm. So I'm, sorry, I'm just trying to find the, the list of them if I can. You think by now I'd learn what page it's on, but <laughs> sadly, sadly not, because I often refer to this for people. Okay, so you either live if you're attractive, okay, because we want you to be attractive and not be the unattractive side. So if you're attractive, you're living life from abundance, living in the present, joy with life. You're happy, enlightened, and empowered. You have self belief and faith. You're not anxious. You're knowing the future. You're at ease and relaxed. You're learning life life's lessons. You're feeling loved, positive, you're non-judgmental and feeling gratitude deeply. Listening to others, you're feeling energised, you're giving and receiving easily. You're forgiving yourself and others. You're generous with time, money and friendship. You're feeling light and bright. You're honest with yourself and with others. You're helping others, being selfless, but not putting your happiness second, I should say that. Yeah. Um, Having fun and laughing lots feeling connected with self and others and unstuck and mo- um, motivated because when you're doing the opposite of those things that is when you're not getting what you're looking for and, and that may be physical money but when you're trying to manifest the things that you're wanting you will sometimes we're we're it is very much about listening to your language you might say oh, I'm desperate for a new car or, I'm desperate for you know man in my life yeah and desperation is actually a negative it's not a positive <laughs> on it so it's about listening to your language about making sure that what you're saying is what's good towards language so you yeah, you're motivated towards that thing rather than away from because it being desperate for actually um there'll be a negative connotation to that for for you this is also about um 
thinking about others, really, thinking about um, putting the energy out. So, you know, thinking about the times that we're in now of lockdown, you know, who can you help? Well, I, you know, I had somebody on the phone earlier who's going to start working with her tomorrow, and she she's depressed. And I said, well, you know, one of the quick ways to get out of depression is so helping others. Yeah. So it's not so it's not about about you. So this is about shining your light for others, looking at who needs needs your help. Ring up somebody that you wouldn't usually have rung up to check that they are okay. You know, go and you know become a volunteer if you, if you're healthy to do so. But even if you're not healthy, you can still befriend over the telephone to people yeah. as well. Because I think some people have not volunteered because they go, well, I can't because I'm not. I've got to isolate, and I'm. You know, I'm precious. I'm I'm here. I need people to deliver to me and, and whatever. But actually, you still got a phone. You still got yeah. the internet. You know, so get helping other people. Send inspirational messages out, and and not putting. There's, there's been so much judgment about. Oh, so and so's done this, and so and so's done that, and they shouldn't do this. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah, whatever. And a that negative energy is bringing people's mental health down. It's making people struggle more. Because it's challenging enough having your kids at home. You might not have kids, but you know the poor mothers at home with their kids the whole the whole time. Yeah, you know, some some parents are loving it, you know, but other parents are finding it very very challenging. But you know, get your kids doing something positive to help others as well. I've got there's somebody I noticed the other day, she's a nutritionist, and she's her son is ten, and he he wants to help, and he's he's just going to go live on her on her site on a I think on Friday on Friday. Um, ask Charlie. You no, know, it's oh, like for kids, to kids, to kids to be in touch, and he'll, he'll answer their queries oh, um, that's about so how they're sweet. feeling. I know, isn't that lovely? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, really lovely. So you know, whatever age, it's about helping us. People have been putting stones out, haven't they? Of like hope yeah. and strength and whatever. Although I saw a judgment about that. Somebody said you should be picking them up. You know, about the, the cross. The, you know, like you know, and then another parent, parent wrote back saying, "Give us some credit. We're not going to pick them up." just going to look at them you know it's sort of it's it's sort of uh yeah getting uh people getting frustrated yeah on it. so so yeah this is very much about attracting what you're wanting and to attract to manifest you've got to be um high vibration you've got to be light and bright you know i have a tendency to overwork i've the last few weeks i've because i've been isolated i've not really done nearly as much as what i would usually put myself under but i'd actually done too much at the hospital i've been at and it had to take that time out, and that's that put me over the non-attractive yeah. side, yeah, and and having to actually rest and go, what else do I need to learn, so I don't keep doing this because it's really not helpful, um, to you know do too no. much than to then to be knackered because um, yeah, so it's about looking at looking at how you can attract through love, gratitude, welcome energy. So make sure that you are doing your gratitudes every day, noticing what you do have rather than what you don't have yeah being loving towards other people and just allowing that good energy in because you know full moon is when you get rid of the negative stuff let rid of the yeah. negatives and allow we're, we're going into a massive shift of new good stuff so exactly you know, yeah and all bright the, ahead and the cards that came out quite compliments with that as well because <laughs> we've got embracing enthusiasm ah. shout to the heavens with happiness <laughs> so there you go it, it's kind of like compliments and that that card and that's how I love these the way all, all these all these all these work again it's the positive you know absolutely it, have, it, on, have only positive expectations hope yes you know the positive exactly. when you put the positive out you know this is your reticular uh, um it, oh God, reticular activating system in your mind where you visualize the things that you're wanting mm-hmm. but you have to be um, positive with it for it, you know, and to feel it as if it's happening for things yeah. to manifest for you. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 you know, be positive and embrace it with enthusiasm, and and you know, and and shout how happy you are, um, how how wonderful you how wonderful you feel. Um, so, everyone, I hope you um, have enjoyed this and found it insightful, and the words of wisdom this has given you will help you on your journey you know and maybe um help you through these 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 times that we're going through at the moment so liz if people want to connect with you how do they do that uh easiest way is probably through um my website so 
insightfulminds.co.uk. Um, so it's I N S I G H T F U L minds. Uh, dot uk or they can email me liz at insightfulminds.co.uk um to be in touch and you know i, I offer a, um a complimentary chat first of all to work out you know what you're looking for and because i have different levels of budget because people, i'm working with people around their self-worth often they don't have the money so it might be going okay you know what are the cheaper options that i have to work with somebody yeah. you know until you're ready to work with me in a full sense or I might refer them on if, they, if they're not ready to work with me because obviously we don't connect with everybody um, so people need to be able to at least have a, have that option to have a chat and see what's right for them because I, you know, I can do an angel reading or a tarot reading or a, yeah. I've got an online online you know, sort of be happier course but anxiety and depression and um, trauma are um, second nature for me to help people with but not in a traditional way of psychotherapy and counselling. It's very much about shifting that energy out of you so actually you, you understand which way to go and to feel better. So sadly, a lot of my clients will have lost um, people or they may have had losses of different senses of, of uh, redundancy or not getting a the job they were going to get or not being able to see their family members you know, before they die. You know, all sorts of different losses. So that's kind of... Um, if anybody goes onto the website, my, what I'm showing as my specialism is. Mm-hmm. But if you think, will she be able to work with, with this particular issue? Ask me. Because yeah, I do, again, do we, a lot come, of things. We've come back to ask again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh it's always it's always ask. So everyone, thank you so much for um, for watching this show. And like Liz, if you um, with me, if you have reached that crossroads in your life. Um, you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you. So reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call via Skype or Messenger to find out more about each other and how I can help you. And of course, my Angel Wings community is our uh, membership is now open. So where you get a chance to um, work with Ascended Masters, Archangels, um, Oracle Cards to spread your wings and soar. And also, if you want to sign up um, to a weekly newsletter on my website, you get a free guide to relaxation and other three, other three, free, three, free gifts. Uh, <laughs> get, me, get me tea fixed. Um, so, um, again, thank you all for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are many women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny like you. And I look forward to seeing you all, same place, same time next week. So thank you very much, Liz, for being on the show today. It's been wonderful um, listening to you. And thank you to everyone who's watched and has has said hello. Hello? Hello. I do my push push. Hello. (laughs) And I will see everyone next week. So thank you all for being here. And I'll see you soon. Bye.